Hello, it is Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Saturday puzzle today, which means it may well be the trickiest puzzle of the week, and it is a themeless puzzle. And fortunately, it is relatively cool today in my room. I hear we're in for a bit of increasing heat again in the coming days, but it shouldn't be anything as brutal as it was over here last week. So this I would say pleasantly temperate edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by, in part, a new benefactor. So welcome to Gabor Sefel, and thank you so much for becoming a benefactor of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for which you are uh, will soon be entitled to the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. And this edition is also brought to us by Bradley Pertle, as well as, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, and welcome to Gabor Sifel, our new benefactor. And if you'd like to join their ranks and also get that Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can also become a member of the Patreon campaign at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. Thank you to everybody who has done so at any level. And in addition to yesterday's um, mini puzzle speed solve, the weekly speed solve that goes up each Friday, I uh, well, today, by the time this video goes up, it will be live. I solved something I had never encountered before. It's it's a New York Times vowelless crossword, is what it was called, and I I'd never heard of, seen, or certainly attempted a vowelless crossword, and I didn't know what it was at the point at which I started solving it. And so, if you're curious about what that is, and you are a patron, you can head over and watch that solve now. I had a lot of fun with it, and if I see any more of those pop up on the New York Times. Uh, variety puzzles uh, schedule. I will certainly add those to the Patreon campaign as well. I will solve them, I mean, and add those videos. So uh, do enjoy those if you are a patron. And speaking of things on the Patreon campaign, today's puzzle, the Saturday puzzle, is a themeless puzzle, and it was constructed by John Lieb, whose name I recognize because he is the proprietor of the Boss Words tournament. And if you were a Patreon backer I don't know, last fall, I suppose, the last autumn, there was a, that's one in the spring as well. Anyway, there's this competition called Boss Words with uh, difficult, themeless puzzles. They're intended to be more difficult than a Saturday New York Times puzzle. And I found that to be true. And uh, this is a timely puzzle because tomorrow is the summer Boss Words tournament. And I did buy an entry ticket to that, but I busy tomorrow, so I don't think I'm going to be able to participate in the tournament in real time. But hopefully, because I bought access to it, I'll still be able to solve the puzzles in my own time. And if that's true, I will put those up on the Patreon campaign as well for backers. So look forward to that. Anyway, this is a puzzle constructed by John Lee, proprietor of Boss Words. And he is, it looks like he's constructed around 20 puzzles himself for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And as you'll know, if you solved well, if you were a, a patron when I was solving those passwords puzzles, those passwords puzzles are difficult. So I don't know if that, I don't know if I should expect that out of this one, but we'll see. And if you are a patron, look forward to more passwords going up on the channel soon. Anyway, let's go, Braveheart villain. You know what? I've actually never seen Braveheart. Um, is the villain an English king or something? I'm not. I'm actually I don't don't know offhand. I don't even know who the hero of Braveheart is. Is it Robert the Bruce, maybe? Is that, is that who that film's about? I don't know. Shoddy Treatment. And I don't know. Uh, Monodon Monoceros, more familiarly. It'll be ob This is obviously a species name, but I don't know to what it is referring. Qatar, e.g., is an emirate. And status informally is uh, I was going to say rep for reputation. Is that what you could call that? I, I, think, I think that's fair enough. Organization with a snake in its logo. Maybe the American Medical Association would be my guess because of the caduceus, the um, sort of medical, the medical symbol with the, the snake 
um, sort of climbing up the staff. And that's my guess. We'll have to see. Shoddy treatment is a, oh, a raw deal. How about that? And has a list is, oh, has a list as in uh, listing, as in tilting to the side like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So if it has a list, it leans. There we go. And uh, Defense Secretary under Obama. Uh, why can't I remember this? Um, uh, that's very frustrating. A remnant could be a, a dreg. You could also say sort of dribs and drabs, or you could argue, are remnants. But I think the dregs are really the remnants. So I'm going to say that. And Utah home of Weber, Weber, Weber State University. Um, but I don't think I know it. Oh, oh, Leon Panetta. That's the answer here, right? Defense Secretary under Obama. I, I had that on the, had that on the tip of my tongue for ages, and I was try, I just sat there trying to will it to <laughs> progress beyond the tip of my tongue, which I'm often not able to do on these uh, video solves. But today I was opposite of cut is append that's obviously not the answer but that's sort of what it feels like but it's not opposite of cut i'm not sure okay suffer abject humiliation eat dirt maybe could be eat crow but that's not really suffering abject humiliation that's kind of owning up to your humiliation i suppose or your incorrectness oh ogden utah home of waivers i mean i don't I don't know anything about this university, but it, Ogden just looks like a name that would fit in here. So I suspect that's the case. And opposite of cut. Oh, attend class. Cut class, attend class. Okay, that might be it. Ending with love or tap. Love ends, tap ends, right? Those are both phrases. Okay, no matter what, win or lose, you might say. That's the attitude I have to take when I tackle the boss words competition as run by John Lieb, uh, because I definitely am not going to win. Uh, Dar es Salaam and aids in making craft projects in brief. Aids in making craft projects in grief. In, in grief. <laughs> Hopefully not in grief, but in brief. I'm not sure offhand. Super G competitor. Oh, I, you know, I'd never heard of Super G, I don't think, until um, what was it? The most recent winter olympics and it's some kind of it's some kind of is it skiing or is it snowboarding or maybe it's both i think it was skiing maybe no maybe it was snowboarding i don't know it was some sort of winter sport but anyway competitor and big air was another one with which i was unfamiliar i hope i'm remembering this correctly is that helping me at all it doesn't seem to be let's just move on this i can answer Marion Blank, Best Actress winner for La Vie en Rose. Uh, Mer Mer uh, if I'm going to try and say it poorly in French, it would be Marion Cotillard or something like that. Marion Cotillard. Okay, a doofus could be an ass, quite straightforwardly. And AC is to blank as, to, as DC is to Edison, right? So this was alternating current and direct current, alternating current being favored by Tesla. And I think there are people who consider it sort of a historical injustice that Edison's direct current won out. Aids in making craft projects in brief. Um, probably ends in an S. Like many a shoot in shoots and ladders. Um, I don't know. That's the children's game. But I don't know what it wants. First person to fly solo around the world in 1933. You'd think this would be the kind of thing I would just have ready to go, but it doesn't seem as though I do. And gesture signifying perfection. Oh, this has really become very common in the past several years. The chef's kiss, the sort of <laughs> fingers away from the mouth in the in that kind of demonstrative Italian fashion. And there's a little emoji for it as well. Aids in making craft projects in brief. Uh, 
I don't, I just, yeah, I'm not seeing it. Super G competitor. Uh, right. I don't know. Abbreviation on a receipt is, I don't know. I'm not doing well here, am I? Question asked when going through an old family photo album, perhaps. Who, <laughs> who is that? Or who is this or something, maybe? That would be, that would be sort of funny. Maybe that's the answer. Match to see a bet, maybe? Method of music education. Oh, what are what are these? There's a Suzuki method. Um, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure of these. Uh, I don't. I don't even. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be one that I know or not. We'll have to see. Where can we look to get myself out of this funk? Twentieth century map initials SSR, Soviet Socialist Republic perhaps, and smooth veneers are. Lacquers, maybe? It's not really a veneer. I guess it depends if you're using veneer as in the in the literal sense, which I think is a it's what like a very, very thin sheet of wood that you put over some other material, composite material of some kind to make it make the whole thing seem like wood. But also veneer has a broader meaning that just means something put on top of something literally or metaphorically. Anyway, award in a lawsuit damages and metaphor for a difficult ordeal and Braveheart villain, right? Oh, Edward, maybe? Edward the first or something? Blanc du Diable, notorious French penal colony. I'm not sure. Monodon Monoceros AA and Dia Después de Hoy. Again, terrible pronunciation, I'm sure. And it'll be a day of some sort. Anyway, shell game. And bottom of the barrel. Um, what is the, the lees, maybe? In, in winemaking, the lees are the kind of remnants sort of the dregs, I guess you could say. Um, I wonder if that, I wonder if that's what this means. Smooth veneers. Metaphor for a difficult ordeal. Oh, darn. Yeah, I'm, I'm not confident enough to, to put that in. Field of informatics. Don't know what that is. Oh, science of some sort. Data science? I don't think I'm familiar with the term informatics, but kind of you can infer what that means. Shell game. Oh, dia dispuesto. Is that mañana, tomorrow? The day after today, maybe? And smooth veneers. Right. I'm going to just keep reading that in a contemplative way as though that's going to give me the answer. This does look like Edward, doesn't it? What if it were? Smooth veneer. Oh, enamels. Right, okay. Yeah, you could have an enamel that is a covering of something to make it smooth. That looks right. And metaphor for a difficult ordeal. The ringer. You're put through the ringer. That is a metaphor for a difficult ordeal. Oh, a narwhal. I, right. Okay. I was wondering, maybe it's rhinoceros or something. I was trying to think it was something that was going to have one horn of something. The, the, and But then rhinoceros shares too much of the clue and also it's far too long a word. But a narwhal has one horn. Oh, look at this. Animal whose name means literally nose. Okay. Well, here's another way I could have determined it wasn't rhino or rhinoceros because it already appears in the puzzle apparently. And I somehow never read this clue. And anyway, yes, nose. As we have that in English through things like rhinoplasty. Okay. Oh, oh darn. Are rats maybe? A, A, am I right? Did I look at that one? I can't remember. So are rats does look right. A shell game is an egg toss, I suppose. Because eggs have shells. Oh, so the bottom of the barrel was the lees after all. Oh, il, il du diable. So the island of the devil, I suppose, or something like that. And Braveheart villain is Edward the First. Okay, so indeed, English king, and first person to fly solo around the world. Still don't think I know it. 
Oh, oh, music, method of music education, solfege, right. So this is the, I do know this, but I, I wasn't thinking of it. It's not a sort of school of music in the all-encompassing all encompassing way that, uh, you know, Suzuki is or something like that. It's, solfege is um, the sort of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, the, the, those named named notes. I don't, I don't really know, honestly, much about how it's used in music education, so I didn't really learn music that way. But um, but anyway, that's what that is. Okay. Part of a plan. A phone line. You could have a cell, cellular plan or a home phone plan. Circuit building block. Circuit building block. Not seeing it immediately. Aids in making craft projects. Is this right? What was this? Oh, right. Dar es Salaam, the city. Yeah. Okay. That's fairly confident that's correct. So I was wondering if maybe this was throwing me off somehow, but it's not. Um, Super G competitor. Aids in making craft projects in brief. Disc. Sorry, I apologize if this is very clear to many of you. Uh, I don't know. I should move on. Right, this is who is this or who is that. I think poorly suited is inapt. You're not up to the job. Abbreviation on a receipt. Charge, maybe? And joint venture. Atkins diet, no, no. So Atkins is what? Is it no... Carbs? Is that what Atkins is? Rices? It doesn't seem right. Bread? Poorly suited, I suppose, could be incorrect. Pasta? Poorly suited. Maybe I'll delete this for now. Yeah, I'm not sure. Detective Blank Briscoe of Law and Order. I don't know. I don't know. Ah. That's the kind of thing that does pop up in boss words puzzles, and then I never know it. Pays a fare to get there, say. Cabs it, maybe? It's a little bit awkward, but it could be. Cash crop of South America. Corn? Um, not sure. And some grilled meat dishes. Asadas, uh, rib, b -b -bs. Um, blank command, classic arcade game. Missile command is a classic arcade game, one of the early arcade games. And 1980s TV celeb with a role in Rocky Three. Well, I'm pretty sure that's Mr. T, despite not having seen Rocky Three. I think I've seen images of him in that film. Entourage is a retinue. And brought out is trotted out, maybe? There we go. Must, if you must do something, well, if she must do something, she has to. I'm going to use the right pronoun there for it to work. And some gr grilled meat dishes are what? Probably end with an S? It could be an adjective, that's the thing. It doesn't need to be a noun. Person, okay, but it is, I think it is an S in this case, because a person who's corrupt by nature could be a bad seed. Uh, cash crop of South America. Coca, perhaps? Color of a glacier. Ice blue. There we go. And tip of a writing implement is a nib on a, on a fountain pen. And what a circular argument has is no point, I suppose. Oh, like many a shoot and sh it shoots and letters. It's simply S-shaped. All right. Uh, fair enough. And some great grilled meat dishes are kebabs. All right. That looks good. Oh, Super G competitors and alpine skier. Okay, it was, it was a winter sport after all. Not that that helped me very much. I could have, could have inferred this was alpine skier with that many crosses without having it, had a clue to begin with. Okay, this looks like what? Wiley Post, maybe? Kind of wish I'd remember, recognize the name, but I don't think I do. Anyway, D DIY kits would aid one in making craft projects. And a circuit building block is a logic gate, right? Yes, so a logic gate um, is what 
well, it's what it's what circuit boards are, I, I suppose, in totality, made up of many, many, many of. Okay, so that this is still there, and then joint venture. Oh, right, there's a question mark. I didn't really take that into account. So it could be referring to a joint, like a cigarette, like a marijuana cigarette. What would it be? A it could be venture. Could be the pun. Joint. It could be joint, like a joint in the body, like a knee or something like that. Um, I don't know. Detective Blank Briscoe. Oh, Lenny, Lenny Briscoe. Actually, that kind of scratches some distant familiarity in my head from something or other. I think that might be right. Use curlers on, say, set one's hair. And if you're poorly suited, it does look like inapt, doesn't it? Joint venture. Oh, a pot something. Okay. What? A venture? A farm? Ah, unfit. Unfit, not just, not inapt. So, right, pot farm. And then that that makes, this makes sense. Atkins diet, no, no, could be sugar. And ground is gnashed, your teeth, for instance. And small plane for short flights is an air something. Relationship phase is what? Program file suffix could be exe for executable file. And a lead into course could be discourse, maybe? An air taxi, a small plane for short flights. And who is that? There we go. Relationship phase. Oh, phrase, phrase, sorry. I apologize. That's not helping though. <laughs> Uh, this looks like remotes, something lost in, lost in sofa cushions. Oh, I see. Relationship as in an analogous relationship. So you could say A is to B as X is to Y because you're demonstrating a relationship between them. There we go. And that's the puzzle. I, I think I found that actually less tricky than yesterday's puzzle for whatever reason. But I saw there were people in the, in the Daily Solve Discord chat server who didn't necessarily uh, seem to consider yesterday particularly difficult for a Friday. So... That might have just been me. This one, it had some resistance in it, but it's a Saturday puzzle. It's going to. I didn't, in general, find it to be um, tougher than an average Saturday, which is which, which is what the Bosworth's puzzles, as curated by John Lieb, are meant to be. They are meant to be more difficult than a New York Times Saturday puzzle. So fortunately, this was not this was not that. Uh, at least it, it didn't strike me that way. Let's see. We. I'm trying to think if there's if, if there was anything in here that really tripped me up. I think there were a few things. This Wiley post, it's just knowledge I wish I hadn't had had in my brain, and I didn't really. This Alpine skier thing, Super G competitor. So I think I was erroneously thinking about this as I see. Yes, I was thinking of it as a sport in competition with Super G for eyeballs, perhaps. So another sport you might watch instead of Super G. But no, in fact, it refers to somebody competing in the Super G competition, a competitor of Super G, and that is an alpine skier. I think had I not been on the wrong track for that, I could have maybe gotten that earlier. DIY kits, I also just, that, that I was stuck on that for absolutely ages. Anyway, um, there we have it. That was the Saturday puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. And now... We can look at a few clues. We can look at a few clues from yesterday's Friday puzzle, which, of which there actually weren't weren't very many. I don't. I had. I guess there were four uh, bits of information. So Kathleen Quinn uh, explains that Purim, the the uh, Jewish holiday, uh, in English the Feast of Lots, is a Jewish, a joyous Jewish festival commemorating the survival of the Jews who, in the fifth century BC, were marked for death by their Persian rulers. The story is related in the biblical book of Esther, who is a Jewish queen of the Persian king and risked her life to petition the king to save her people. So that was, that's the explanation behind Esther in yesterday's puzzle. So thank you, Kathleen. And Michelle McBride Charpentier explains that real Greek salads are prepared with a single slice of feta. So that was a reaction to my reaction 
my, my baffled reaction to the idea of a slice of feta cheese. And again, there actually were people in the discord who shared my surprise at that. So I think you're making, it's a fair point that a real, a sort of real traditional Greek salad is served with a single slice of feta, but I, I have to double down on my, on my um, belligerence here. I, it's, I still wouldn't call it a slice. I would consider that a slab or a, I don't know, even a block, maybe, maybe block is, is too much. You'd think that's a kind of almost square, uh, cubic kind of thing. But un unless there are Greek salads that are served with a th sort of a thin cut bit of feta, I guess, I guess you could say it's a thick slice. It's still, I still wouldn't call it a slice. It's too thick, <laughs> but, but I'm prepared to acknowledge that that's, that's the, perhaps not fully justified. Anyway, thank you for the context. Laura Sexton says, once again, my age helped me. Whammo, the company behind the hula hoop and Frisbee was a staple of advertising in the 1950s and 60s. So this was, this was uh, Whammo, W-H-A-M-O, which went into the, into the puzzle yesterday. And I think it was clued as something like maker of the hula hoop or inventor of the hula hoop or something like that. Uh, anyway, Laura continues, coming from a frugal family, my first Frisbee was a Pluto platter. So not a whammo, I suppose. I suspect my hula hoop was also an off-brand, but I do not remember which one. So the uh, inferior Pluto platter, or at least made to seem inferior by the, the, the marketing organ around whammo, presumably. Thank you, Laura, for that. And <laughs> Kathleen Quinn points out, according to the New York Times constructor notes, the constructor hid a little joke in yesterday's puzzle. It is emanating downward from the whoopee cushion. Those who enjoy junior high school level boys humor might enjoy going back to the grid to the grid to find it. So yes, I will leave you to find that yourself in yesterday's puzzle. Thank you, Kathleen. All right. And that's that for yesterday's clues, which means that's that for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday puzzle, a much larger puzzle. It shouldn't be too tricky, but it's a big one. So they always, they tend to be the longest solves of the week, despite the midweek difficulty. Anyway, do come back for that. I hope you do. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.